Another thing that I um, wanted to kind of bring up, I think it always bears repeating that, um, you know, we've seen the studies that under correction of myopia is not a good way to manage myopia. Uh, I think it's always important to keep that in mind. Most of what you've talked about, Kathy, is um, really focused on, you know, the binocular vision system and, and kind of along those lines. But um, can you tell us a little bit how you feel about the peripheral defocus theory and how heavily you think that weighs in when you spend so much time thinking about it from a binocular vision perspective? Okay, so I think there's a couple of pieces. One is, I know that the studies have shown that uh, undercompensating is maybe even detrimental. You know, maybe that even drives myopia more. I have always, when I work with patients, tried to prescribe the minimum plus that they need at distance. And I think that a lot of doctors tend to go a little farther than that and maybe over minus a little bit. And I wanna give them as, even without an ad, even without adding more plus for near, I certainly wanna keep the, the distance minus to the minimum that's going to do the job. Um, and if I am going to under minus some, someone because you know they don't wanna wear an ad or I just uh, feel like they're just beginning to become myopic, maybe I'm seeing them at the end of a day, maybe some of that is uh, still shifting uh, earlier in, you know, in the day, I might not find it in the same way. I, I might undermine someone by a quarter or a half, but I always felt that it didn't make sense to undermine us by a lot because I felt that that also put a stress on the person's system and likely was not helpful. So uh, I don't think it was, I, I don't, I never did a lot of undermine us in a big way. If I did it, it was always in a small way, maybe maybe no more than a half. And, and in some cases, when you're doing your refraction, you tend to do it monocularly. And you'd be surprised if you finish doing your refraction and you have someone even in a phoropter, uh, and you now go back a quarter step or a half step when both eyes are open, they're going to tell you it's just as clear. Maybe if you do a red green balance they'll be a little bit in the red um they certainly won't be a quarter in the green but it's an, it's good enough for most of the things that they need to do um you know so unless they're needing to drive at night or something where they absolutely maybe even do a sport where they need very very sharp distance acuity they usually feel fine and you need to think about that i mean i always said to myself well if a patient comes in after a year and now they're half diopter more myopic than they were last year. How long have they been walking around in those glasses that were under minus? Did they become under minus two months after they got the last pair? Six months, nine months? I don't know when that happened. No, and if it's a gradual process, how gradual is it and how does it actually happen? And so by the time they're complaining about it, they had to have had some of that going on, but I don't always know for how long. So clearly they tolerated a small amount of, of being under minus for a period of time. So they may not always need it, um, depending on, again, what is their day like? What are the kinds of things that they're, that they're doing? And uh, what would be the right thing for them to have? So today having you know soft multifocal lenses that work well, um, I think can be something because not everyone wants to wear bifocal glasses, although it's very interesting that some of the studies have shown that the best thing in terms of a bifocal would be an executive bifocal, which is exactly what we used to do many years ago because we really felt that was the right thing to do somehow, even though you know, when you converge it near, you're not using the periphery of the lens to see. And yet we used to always prescribe executive uh, bifocals, or maybe if it was a very small frame, I'd do a flat top 35. But I, I, I did that for many, many years until it became sort of, you know, not so, uh, not so okay to go around wearing eyeglasses that had a line on them. I think when progressive lenses came along, it, it kind of messed us up for everybody, you know, mm. in that, in that cosmetically, they didn't want to want to have that anymore. Now you talk with kids and you say bifocal with a line, they don't even know what you're talking about. Um, and then the newer lenses, um, I'm, I think that the research is certainly showing that if you can have more plus in the periphery, that that makes sense. 
And I think that's kind of what we were doing when we were prescribing these executive bifocals years ago. But some of the lenses, the way they're designed, it seems like there's also going to be a certain amount of blur in the periphery, like the DIMS lens or a couple of others that are they're working on. And I don't know how well everyone will tolerate that because we don't have the approval here yet for some of those. And um, I also wonder how much it will cause them to tunnel a bit and not keep periphery as open because I do know that if you have a patient looking at the chart and you just talk with them about noticing the edges of the chart rather than just kind of the middle where they're reading, sometimes they'll read another line or two. Um, and so you need that peripheral input to kind of know where to look before you can make it clear. I really believe you have to localize before you accommodate. And so um, I don't know uh, if it does slow down the myopia, how much it will it, and uh, will it have other kinds of effects over time uh, in terms of that, you know, if you take it away, what's going to happen? 